boy do last night. He told me he ain't got my money yet, man. Stop that one right there. Let me tell you something that happened to a friend of mine. His name's Bill. Bill and I used to be real close. He used to be one of my best friends. We went to the same school together since like about the fourth grade. We used to always go swimming during the summers. And then I remember our families were so close. One, one Christmas, they even got us bikes at the same time, that, you know, the same Christmas. We used to go riding those bikes all over the place. Then about a year ago, Bill's dad left. And Bill was real close to his dad. So things are different now. Bill is different, he's changed a lot. He's kind of going downhill. He's almost being a loser. I think he even got into some fights at school, something Bill would never do. I don't know, he started missing class. We don't even hang out together that much. He's even hanging out with the wrong crowd. I think he's even hanging out with this guy, Joe. I think he sells drugs. You gonna pick up that stuff, man? You sure? Yeah. Don't be backing out now. Dude. Check out this guy. Nah, he'll be alright, man. Hmm. Who's that? You get that car in there? Yeah, I'll just take it on, dude. George 4, I'm close by. I'll take that. George 3, also. George 4, I'm coming in from the north. I see him. I'll attempt to make contact. All right, keep the fingers locked. Now step back, step back, step back. Spread your feet apart, kids. Spread your feet apart. Why'd you run? Why'd you run? Where's your buddies going? I didn't do anything, man. Where did they go? What is this? Know. Oh, look at this. What is this? Is this yours? No. Is this yours? No. Whose is it? Whose is it? It's not mine. It's not mine, man. Let's go over here by the car. Keep your hand on your head. Keep your hand on your head. Right here. You don't know who that belongs to? No. It's not yours? What's it doing in your pocket? I found this over by where those guys were. That ain't mine, man. This was in his pocket. Okay. All right, that's okay. What, what's your name, man? Bill Thomas. Okay, Bill. Who's your homeboy's your name? I don't know their names, man. How long have you known them? Just a couple months. Have you ever seen this? No. Do you know what it is? Yeah, I know what it is, what but is, it's not what mine. Is it? It's a it's a crack file, man. Who's uh it was over by where you guys were sitting at. It's not mine. I don't know whose it is. I don't know whose it is. It was just there. I don't know whose it is. How long were you guys there? <sighs> Half an hour. Can you tell me anything at all about it? No. I'm sorry. Well, we'll go ahead and get him out of here. All right, let's go. Let's get in the car. Juvenile. Okay, watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. Get your head down. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to have an attorney yeah. present when you are questioned. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you. Everything you say can and will be used against you. I don't know their names, man. I'll have you know them. Just a couple months. Is yours? No. Whose is it? Bill, don't get in trouble. Come on now, take care of yourself. That homeboy dude last night told me that he ain't got my money yet, man. I was told. Stop! Okay, watch your head, watch your head, watch your head. Get your head down. You know, I need you. I need you to take care of Elizabeth. Bring me a story. Seated. This is a time set for the sentencing of Bill Thomas. Uh, the record may reflect that the minor has previously been found guilty through his guilty plea to the charge of possession of marijuana and drug paraphernalia. Please stand.
Now, as I understand it, in reading the probation reports that I've been uh, provided with, today's a day that I have to decide whether to lock you up in our state uh, juvenile institution or whether I should continue you on probation. Do you understand that, Bill? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, how old are you? 16. Please be seated. Counsel, if you'd state your appearances for the record. Anita Roy for the prosecution, Your Honor. Eric Harris on behalf of the defendant, Your Honor. Ms. Roy, I did read the police reports, but you could, uh, could you refresh my memory in terms of the factual basis for the minor's guilty plea? Yes, Your Honor. Approximately four weeks ago, the police received a telephone call that a group of juveniles were loitering outside an area known to be drug trafficking. When they approached the scene, the teenagers ran and Bill Thomas was caught. The arresting officer, Colette, discovered a baggie full of a substance known to us to be marijuana in Bill's vest pocket, as well as a pipe used for smoking marijuana. Please go on. Thank you. Approximately three weeks ago, the defendant, after speaking with his attorney, and I'm, I'm told his mother, pled guilty to possession of drugs and drug paraphernalia. Now, I, I recall reading something about crack uh, cocaine being used or being found. Yes, Your Honor, but the police did not make a determination that it belonged to Mr. Thomas, and unfortunately he's refusing to tell the police who it actually belonged to. He's been in uh, custody or in jail since he was arrested? Yes, Your Honor. As you recall, approximately three months ago, you placed Bill on probation for shoplifting. In light of the fact that he was currently on, uh, on probation at the time of his arrest, we determined that um, it was not, he was not a good candidate for release. And based on that, does the state have a recommendation as to his sentence? Yes, we do. The people believe that Bill is not a good candidate for continued probation and recommend his incarceration. Mr. Erickson, on behalf of the defense. Yes, Your Honor. It's our position that uh, Bill should be continued on probation and that incarceration in the state juvenile institution is not in the best interest of either the state or the minor. I'd like to call Bill's mother, Pat Thomas. Is she present? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Thomas, if you'd come forward. Your name is Pat Thomas? Yes. And you're Bill's mother? Yes. Do you have any other children at home, Pat? Yes, I have a daughter, Elizabeth, who's five. Are you employed, Pat? Yes. I'm a secretary, and sometimes I do waitressing. I'm part-time in the evenings. Uh, Pat, are you married? No, I'm recently <coughs> divorced. Since the time of your divorce, have you noticed any change in Bill's behavior? Um, since Bill's dad left, he's been hanging around with some kids that I don't like very well, and his grades have, have dropped off. Prior to the time of your separation, what kind of student was Bill? Bill was an excellent student. He was on the wrestling team, and he had some really nice friends. One of the reasons he's not in the wrestling team is because now that his dad's left and I have to work so much, I have to depend on Bill to be there in the evenings and right after school to help take care of his sister and just to do chores around the house. Pat, if the judge decides to sentence Bill to the uh, juvenile institution, how would that affect your family? Well, we need him at home. We need Bill to be at home. You know, the, Bill's dad's gone, and his sisters, he and his sister are real close, and I depend on Bill. It's been real difficult with him being gone this last month. It's been real hard. I haven't been able to, to work in the evenings, and my, my boss my, for my day job is real upset because I have to leave early sometimes with Elizabeth. He, I, we need him at home. He, he really needs to be part of our family, our whole family unit will break up. Thanks, Ida. <coughs> Does the state have any questions? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Thomas, you were present when the court placed Bill initially on probation barely three months ago, weren't you? Yes. And at that time, the judge told both you and your son, Bill, that there were certain terms of probation that he'd have to comply with. Isn't that correct, ma'am? Yes, that's true. And they included that he must obey all laws, Yes. That he must attend school regularly. Yes, that's true. And that he must cooperate with his probation officer. Isn't that correct? Yes. Now, Bill has committed new crimes, hasn't he, since he's been on probation? Well, he's running around with the bad crowd. But he's committed new crimes, too, hasn't he? Yes. And he won't go to counseling like the probation officers ask him to do? But we've talked about that in the last month, and, and he's going to do that. And he hasn't attended school regularly, has he? 
Well, I'm, you know, I was gone a lot. Now you have a pretty busy, busy schedule, don't you? Yes, I do. And because of that busy schedule, you haven't been able to adequately supervise your son, have you, ma'am? No, I have been working. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Erickson, do you have any other witnesses or evidence that you want me to consider? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Are we ready for uh, closing statements, Ms. Royal? The court placed Bill on probation just three months ago, and already he's back before this court again, and this time on a more serious case. Not just shoplifting like it was the last time, but now he's before the court for drugs. He says to us that he's changed his ways, that he's willing to reform himself, that he's willing to listen to his probation officer. But they repeatedly ask him to tell him and cooperate with them as to who the person was who owned the crack cocaine, and he won't even do that. The story of Bill Thomas is a story of a young man who has uh, had obligations thrust upon him. Yes, he has stumbled. Yes, he has made mistakes as a result of those obligations being placed upon him. But I submit, Your Honor, that the 14, the 15 years preceding the last year of his life are far more instructive as to the nature of his personality and the quality of his character. It is the long-term this long-term record that gives me an indication of his character. And that long-term record is one of a hard-working student, of a good student, an athletic student, uh, someone who is involved in his school, involved with his family, and who cares deeply for his family. If this court were to sentence Bill to the Department of Corrections, the upheaval on his family, as demonstrated by his mother, would be substantial. I submit, Your Honor, that the most appropriate sentence in this uh, in this matter is to continue bill on probation to order him to do some community service work to repay the debt to the community that this offense has cost and if there is ever your honor an individual that is in need of the services the probationary services of this court it's this young man before you today bill is there anything that uh, you would like to tell the court yes go ahead bill uh, if I was put on probation, I, I I know I've said it before, but I can promise you I'd stay away from drugs. I'd continue helping my mother around the house, taking care of my sister. I really honestly feel that if I was put on probation, that that I'd, I'd do a lot better. I mean... Listen, Bill, let me ask you something. Do you realize uh, how many times I hear this from people like you? Do you think maybe you should have thought about your sister and your responsibilities with her and your mother uh, maybe before you got into this trouble, before you violated the trust that I gave you when I put you on probation? I understand how much trouble I'm in right now, but I have been trying. I, I've just I've been having a really hard time this past year with my dad moving away and I've had a lot of responsibilities um, that have really kept me from from the things that I, I I like to do, like like wrestling, and I guess I do. I guess I just got angry. I I started getting involved in drugs, but those guys, they aren't my friends. The reason that that I that I haven't told you who they are is because I'm afraid of them. Do you understand uh, that I have a responsibility not only to you but to the community? Don't you think that these people that you claim are not your friends that you were hanging with, uh, that were using the crack and that you were uh, getting high with, don't you think that they're going to kind of think that we're kind of a joke down here when you're on probation? I'm really, really scared. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Bill is saying the right things now. I'm not sure that uh, he means them or he's going to be able to follow up on them. Uh, I will take under advisement my ruling, and I'll decide by tomorrow whether or not I'm going to send him to the juvenile institution or give him another chance. Well, standard recess. Thank you. All rise. I knew Bill was going to get into some kind of trouble hanging out with these guys. I should have told him something, but, you know, you want to mind your own business. You don't want to get involved. But now, I wish I had talked to him. Bill's hearing was yesterday. 
His mother phone me and let me know what happens. I hope the judge lets him out. Maybe things could be like before. I'm real worried about him though. If he keeps on hanging out with these people like Joe, he'll end up a junkie. I don't know what the judge will do. What would you do?